Hi guys, I'm here in Andy's comic stash. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is a part two. And now off to the weird intro. <laughs> My impressions were pretty much the same thing too. First thing in my head was like, wow, the guy in all the movies, wow. <laughs> Surprised me how fast he was too. Like, homie wasn't just like, no, homie was like, with his chin held up high too, he was just like, hi, how are you? Yeah, yeah, and, and I'm just like, Huh. Here I am struggling at 11 in the morning, crying because I didn't sleep a full 15 hours. By that time he was already signing, ready to go. He had his entourage behind him, helping him out, pass him whatever uh, people had to, for him to sign. It was pretty quick. It was, it, was like a, it was a quick situation, sort of. For those that don't know, the last couple of years that Stanley was alive, his last autographs were pretty much like a quick sign and go, sign and go. Kind of like the photo ops. For those that don't know, the photo ops are pretty quick too. I've had actually in the past some veteran comic book fans that I've met at the comic book shop telling me, oh, I remember getting an autograph and how we talked to him for an hour or, or the whole day or you know things like that. So it was different then. I'm just thinking to myself too, man, if I was about 90 years of age, I'd probably sign and go to. No disrespect to Stan the Manly or any of their entourages because it still blew my mind to the fullest. And I'll tell you why. As I was like maybe 10 people away, uh, one of the entourages was telling us, if you have comic books, take it out your bags and boards, that way, you can, that way you can sign it quick. And I'm taking out my comic book, and again, I'm dreaded back to the whole, oh my god, this comic book's not the best condition. <laughs> uh, and then I see, at that moment, I see the girl getting her Uncanny X-Men issue one signed. I'm like, man, that is... Is rad. And I was at that point on the same table. That sadness turned quickly into Oz, why as I was in front of him and I'm like <gasps> and he looks at my comic book and I go, Mr. Lee, how are you? It's very nice to meet you. He's like, yeah. And before he signed it, I apologized to <laughs> him. I'm like, I am sorry that this comic book is not the best condition you've probably seen. Uh I'm sorry. <laughs> and he just, he was just, at, when after I said he was just like. He signs my book onto the side, picks up my book and everyone was tripping, just like, oh, he's doing more than sign. Wait, look, 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 look. And he's picking it up, he goes, how is that? And I'm just like, that is perfect. <laughs> he goes, yeah, you're fine. You enjoy the con. And I'm shaking his hand. He had a big hand, by the way. Whew. <laughs> shaking his hand, I'm just like, oh, okay, thank you. You enjoy the con, you're fine. And I walk and I hear people rumbling, oh my God, you got an engine. And I'm just like, you know, my, I'm holding my comic book. I'm like, I shook the man's hand too. Oh my God, I'm gonna cry. He didn't have to do that. I, I, I promise you, he did not have to do that. In a world where the signing was sign and go, he shook my hand. I mean, I felt bad. I genuinely felt bad that I had a not so good copy of Captain America 100. But it didn't matter to him. He just said, hey, you know what, here, how's that? You enjoy the con. He didn't have to do that. So hey, if uh, Mr. Stan Lee, you watching this? <laughs> and here is the comic book in my story. It is uh, Captain America 100. Not in its best condition, as you can tell, like a line right here. But oh, look at that. Oh, it's a Stanley signature. Fun little fact though, upon a couple of years later, realizing things, learning more things about comic books, for those that are more hardcore in comic books, if you will, probably should have had this with a COA, or if I knew, or if I knew any better, probably had like a facilitator for CGC, that way it could be graded and a signature, all that stuff, you know? Like I started learning that, I'm like, oh man, that way it won't be like Joe Schmo or anything. But honestly speaking though, I didn't care. Um, at that moment, I really did not care. I genuinely loved the fact that he gave so much in effect to Marvel Comics, both comic books and movies. I thoroughly enjoyed all of that. This was personal. If I'm ever gonna get anything signature series, I'll just buy one, that's cool. To me, uh, the, the money aspect doesn't really bug me too much. 
what still bugs me to this day though is the condition of the damn boat though. <laughs> oh well, can't win them all, but a good memory. So let's wrap up this kamikaze story. Towards the end, I met up with my two cousins and my little brother. We were exhausted. We were running on nothing but a nostalgia. We're literally on the floor, just tired. And I told them what happened with my comic book. They told me their experiences with their people. My cousin Bianca in particular, she showed me a, like a, a page, like a magazine page of the Powerpuff Girls. It was like in super good condition. And she ripped it off a magazine when she was a little girl. Bianca, if I'm butchering this, please don't kill me. But it was in a really good condition. She kept it all throughout the years and she had that signed by all Powerpuff Girls. It was so cool. The funny part about everyone telling their stories we checked our clocks and we realized it wasn't even noon yet. We had a whole day ahead of us of con. All of our dreams coming true happened within two hours of that con, like two, three hours. <laughs> that year was nuts. Epilogue to that story, we fast forward to, oh, I don't know, seven more years of that same con. We've had uh, many friends come through. I always had that tradition of like, taking a group photo before, during, or after, because I, I like, I'm, I'm that weird. Granted, it was the same con, but it's eight years worth of con. I've met a few other people in that mix, not just famous people, but also like friends I've made over the years. I still keep in contact as much as I can. So that's my experience with the cons before the comic book shop. LA Comic Con kind of pretty much took over this video. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> There's just a lot to it, and to be fair, I didn't even tell you every detail. There's just so much on it. Maybe for another time. Now let's fast forward to January, 2022. By this point, I'm at the comic book shop that I work at, and around that time, the restrictions were a little bit lower. For those that don't know, Legends Comics and Games does comic book conventions. They have booths, they sell stuff, the last two years of LA Comic Con, they had a booth, which was pretty cool. At that con, they were selling CGC sealed books. Going back to January, 2022, first con that they booked was Albuquerque Comic Con. And of course, yours truly was invited. Uh, even though I have about eight years of con in my under my belt, this would be my first con, not only outside of California, but working the booth. So, enjoying a con and working the booth is a little bit different. Well. Mostly the same because I still have fun in them, but at the same time, I have to keep in mind I am helping Legends Comics and Games with a booth to sell, you know. Earlier I was talking about how the farthest I've ever been driving was SoCal. So going from California all the way to Albuquerque, yeah, that's a different terrain. And yes, we drove that. One of my favorite parts about driving to Albuquerque was passing through Flagstaff in Arizona. And that would be the first sunrise I'd ever see that's not California. That blew my mind. One of the owners is next to me as passenger and I'm just looking at the sunrise. I'm like, wow. And she goes, that's beautiful, isn't it? And I go, yes. And it's not California. <laughs> it's a different sunset. That is beautiful. It didn't really take me Till me driving there to really open my eyes and realize this is a big deal. Not to mention it was my first time visiting a Cracker Barrel. That was fun. We made it to Albuquerque at night, got our hotel, went to sleep. We were already tired, only to wake up early in the morning so we can set up the booth. And let me tell you, it, it, ah. we were outside the convention center and we were packing all our stuff on these rolling tables and they were like metal, pushing it all the way up to the convention center. Everyone just doing the same thing too. Everyone's just like kind of busy, just putting things together, getting their product out. Uh, it was really, it was really cool seeing a con that was empty and slowly building to something that we, I usually see in cons. Once our booth was built and ready to go with all our product, I felt like home at that point. I felt like having the shop back at home, but smaller and somewhere else. Not to mention a lot of the booths out there, I got to meet them, I got to talk to them, I got to like get to know them. By that time, the experience from LA Comic Con did help a little bit. A lot of the people I saw over there were at that con too. So it was more like, hey, how you doing? And most of them would be like, oh, you're out of California. And I'm like, yeah, hey, how you doing? And you know, I am. You 
get to know new people. Not even just the booth people, I'm talking about the attendees. I get to know the local stuff. I get to know what they're about. I get to talk to them that I'm from California. They're like, oh, snap, California. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> I always like intros. Intros are fun. Even though they're kind of hard to do, especially on YouTube. <laughs> but I like them. Let me tell you, that place was huge. So at the first level, you had all of the booth people, which is us. It was one side, east wing, west wing on the other side. Upper levels on one side was all of the autograph alley. And you had some pretty big people there. I think the biggest the biggest person they had was Corey Taylor. Uh, that line was huge. And yeah, I know that's a musician. Uh, just something to keep in mind. Comic book conventions are usually different. LA Comic Con has always been just a little bit of everything, but not too much. Still very pop culture. Albuquerque Comic Con was definitely famous people based. Uh, the people that had booths were there, but they were definitely there for like the famous people. So even though I've never been to San Diego Comic-Con, that con tends to be a little bit more like media. Um, they tell you about the newest shows that come out, newest movies, or just anything in between. So, oh, and for sure, like the highest end actors you'll see in the movies, for example, Marvel or DC. At the end of day three, we started putting down our booth, putting away our merch, and started loading up in the truck. That felt cool, because it felt like deja vu, like first day, I'm like, oh snap, it was empty first day, now it's empty again, wait a minute, deja vu. Ah. Once we finished setting up on the truck, we went four hours into the night in Amarillo, Texas. By that point, that'd be the farthest I've ever been from California. Once we landed in Amarillo four hours later, went to our hotel, slept, woke up, we went to Unknown Comic Books. For those that don't know, Unknown Comic Books is a comic book shop in Amarillo, Texas. They are best known for all their varying covers. And let me tell you, all those Marvel covers are sick. It would be my first time meeting the owners of that shop. And honestly speaking, their hospitality was super real. Everyone was super cool. The shop was huge. The covers were everywhere. Not only was I amazed, by the shop, I was also amazed how they ran the shop, man. They, they, they were doing Twitch videos, they were doing uh, whatnot type stuff. It was really cool to see. They ran that place like a beast. I'm gonna be honest with you, I was pretty tired and I think we did catch a bug on our way back. But honestly speaking, the driving to and the driving from was everything to me. I've been so homegrown to where I'm from, a bad day, Tripping would be better for me than not going and probably wondering what could have happened. Going back home, I had so much to say to my family and friends, how fun, how much fun I had. Not to mention a barrel of stories. I can finally tell to the customers at Legends, like, wow. And I thought to myself, man, this can't get any better than this. <laughs> for those that are so holding on tight, I'm sorry, I'm almost done. <laughs> so let's fast forward from January all the way to the end of June of this year. So like literally a month ago. That con would be Heroes Con at North Carolina. I did announce that one on my last video. And technically speaking, I wanted to just talk about that one. But I went to so far of a tangent on this video. If it becomes a part two, it, it, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I thought to myself back in Albuquerque was like, it can't get any crazier than this. And then literally uh, North Carolina was like, hey, hold my beer. The week before was probably the most like tense. For starters, I never really packed for that far. Hell, the packing for Albuquerque, I didn't even use a suitcase. I straight up used a duffel bag and I thought it was overpacked. So this would be the first time I'd use a suitcase. I'm like, what the heck? Really thinking about exactly when what I need to pack and how far it's gonna be. Like, this is clear across the country from California. Like, like, you know what, hold up. Yeah, look at that. <sighs> Heroes Con is more dedicated to the creators, meaning that the writers and the artists are up in the front seat, which is pretty cool. You don't put baby in the back. Heroes Con was definitely the con for me on that one. And looking at the list of people that were there, yeah. You had some older cats, you had some newer dudes, you had, the creators. <laughs> On the day they were gonna pick me up, I was advised to go to sleep because I was gonna drive the next shift. I totally didn't go to sleep. <laughs> Scratch that. I tried sleeping, but I was just so excited. Oh my 
God, I'm gonna be outside of Cali, like even farther, oh my God. On top of that, if this video doesn't serve you as an example, I kind of like, you know, procrastinated a little bit. And I definitely procrastinated on packing because I didn't know how to pack a suitcase. But thanks to my awesome wife, got a suitcase. She taught me how to pack it and I did well. The owners of the shop picked me up from my house. We also picked up our friend Dave, super cool dude. After we picked him up, we drove through the night. By this point, I was pretty familiar from California all the way to Albuquerque, which was the same road we were gonna take. But once we hit to Albuquerque, everything was different from that point on. <laughs> After Texas, we passed damn, Oklahoma, Tennessee, I think. Whichever this map looks like, right here, I'm gonna bring this back. That far. We must have hit like five Cracker Barrels on our way in North Carolina. <laughs> I love fried apples, they're so good. And then finally into North Carolina. From the middle of nowhere to kind of like mountainous type areas with a lot of green, but it was still humid hot. It was like, wow. It has the appearance of like cold, brisk forest, but without the cold part. <laughs> After passing all the green mountains, we finally hit Charlotte. Charlotte was huge. <laughs> For some weird reason, my head was Recepting to like a LA type thing in my head because you know, California. But it kept hitting me again. It's like, this, wait, no, this is not SoCal. This is Charlotte, North Carolina. It was pretty cool, man. We were passing by the, I believe it was a Panther Stadium. That was pretty cool. And they also had the NASCAR Museum. I'm like, okay, Jeff Gordon, I know. The loading was a little bit different. We actually went into a tunnel underground almost. And when we finally stopped to park, we went kind of a uh, slant up into the actual convention center. And that convention center was huge. We were setting up at the Unknown Comics booth onto the corner, which was really cool. They had like these big posters of the covers that they had and they can actually select it. So that way they can send it to you. It was pretty cool. We were pretty at the far end, but I felt like we were with the cool kids. By the time we were done setting up, we had all our clothes. This is a part where, uh, North Carolina holds the beer. We met up with the one and only Jim Steranko. For those that don't know, Jim Steranko is a comic book artist, writer, publisher, graphic designer, magician. Wait, what wasn't he? His most notable work is from Nick Fury and the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And as for me, he did the first few Captain Americas. To say the very least too, he is actually a friend of the shops. So that's intimidating. Two months before the show, the owners would always talk about how we're gonna meet him and I'm gonna meet him and I'm just like, oh boy, I'm just a little scamper kid. I don't, I don't know. I was pretty much intimidated. I know one thing's for sure. Whenever I meet anyone with those kinds of notches under their belt, I always wanna be polite. I definitely always wanna hear what they say. Again, at the end of the day, I am a student of comic books, like I've mentioned in the past. Anyway, we were done setting up. We see him at the other side of the building and just like that, there he was. Got to say hi to him, shook his hand. He's known to pull your hand pretty hard, you know, and he wasn't playing. That man's in his 80s. That's pretty intimidating. <laughs> and let me just say that day, he looks like stone, man. Across the street from the con was the hotel that we were staying at and apparently he was staying at. And he was just kind of just talking to the lady at the lobby. And he looked kind of like, I like, got uh, disturbed or something like that. Like, oh man, like, we gotta work with this. But as he was doing this, like just standing on one foot and everything, I'm, I'm looking at him, I'm like, man, he dresses really good. He's got a really cool tan jacket, the cool boots, like the really like cuffed up pants. I'm like, wow, and here I am with a dumbass t-shirt. <laughs> After that, we gather around on the hotel restaurant. We have some food, some drinks, and we are just, listening to Mr. Steranko. He had a lot to say. More than this video, I promise you. And I was just like an open listener. I was just like, I'm ready to retain everything this man has to say. And he had a lot to say and a lot of good advice. I was really happy that he wasn't annoyed of me because I tend to be kind of annoying, but hey, he said he liked me. I'm like, yes. And uh, Mr. Steranko, if you're watching this video, I can't tell you enough, thank you very much for the awesome and wise words and advices that you were giving me that night and throughout the con too. Thank you. Not only did I realize that 
it was pretty late in the night. It was also not even day one of the con. Day one of the con was a couple of hours from that point. <laughs> like, oh my God. Sure enough, we started day one pretty strong. I got to see a lot of writers and artists' booth as I was walking through the con on the times I wasn't working the booth. It really was creator owned. I must have seen so many writers and artists. I remember passing by Scotty Young, Ed Pisker, Chris Claremont, John Romita Jr., Klaus Jansen, Lee Weeks, and of course, Mr. Storenko. I'm gonna pull my cool card on this one. I know the guy. That reminds me, we were in the same elevator as John Romita Jr. Ooh. We were in the top floor of the hotel. We heard someone go, oh, hold the, hold the elevator, hold the elevator. Uh, my boss held the elevator. Lo and behold, comes in this muscular dude. We're all quiet, because we know who he is. We're just like, right down to the 15th floor. He's just like, you guys enjoying the con? We're like, yeah, we're all so big fans of you. Yeah, oh, thank you, thank you. Oh. It was funny. Going back to Ed Pisker, the writer of The Red Room. After the first time I met him, I saw him everywhere. It was, it was fun. Just a fair disclaimer. For those that are queasy, wouldn't recommend The Red Room. But for those that like the gore, and who can forget the comic book boots? There must have been like 10 to 20 comic book boots. You can literally see short boxes and long boxes as far as the eye can see. A lot of them were old school, so we're talking Silver Age, some were magazine size, and of course you had your newer ones. There were some boots that had like the, their own variant covers or just a bunch of variant covers, incentive covers. Ugh, the way a comic book convention is meant to be. I would love to like, talk about this con just a little bit more, but I've not only exploded this video with other cons, a lot of the detail that I would tell you would go to another tangent, which is another video, which is another, another can of worms. But I'll give you teasers. And these teasers are gonna come through my comic book haul. So the first thing that I got from the con is, in my opinion, probably the most important thing. Back in the day, I used to always go to shows, you know, see some bands, whether it be local or big bands, whatever it is, you always have to get the t-shirt, meaning you were there. So the first thing I got was the con shirt. Heroes Con, you have to get the shirt. I repeat, you have to get the shirt. Yeah, you see a little bit of Scotty Young there. The next thing I got was from our neighbor booth. The gentleman's name was Desmond, and what he does, he cuts up comic books like covers or pages and paste them in like little frames and I had to get the one for NFL Super Pro. It's actually the one behind me right here. It's a little dusty. This was way too random for me to not get. For those that don't know, NFL Super Pro was a 12 issue series back in the 90s about a football themed superhero that apparently NFL teamed up with Marvel for. Again, that's a whole nother tangent. Teaser number. The next item was actually something my boss helped me out to find. One of like the long-term missions I have for any con that I go to, mainly comic book cons, is to find specifically Heavy Metal Magazine issue one. I have yet to like find one in any of the cons I went to until this one. And it's a really clean condition. Like, look at that. That is beautiful. It literally took me like, two weeks to finally crack it open without like damaging it. I wanted to read it so bad. And just FYI, I've mentioned about heavy metal in the past. So consider this teaser number two. Next item was a little bit of a surprise. I wanted to meet two specific artists, which was Lee Weeks and Klaus Jansen. This one came out to the surprise, but I didn't want to mention too much on this. But they ended up signing my very first comic book. It's a 0.5 Gambit number one from 1993. You can see the autographs right here. Lee Weeks and Jensen. This one here is considered the third and final teaser. A lot of worms in this can. Final item on this list is a specific print, specifically called Frogs by Jin Serenko. This particular print, you can read up, down, left to right, sideways, front ways, wherever, which way you want to. It reads almost infinitely. Also my boy, Storenko signed it, look at that. Yeah, to my pal, yeah, we're homies now. This print means a lot to me because this was a part of the millions of conversations that we had that night at the, at the restaurant. At the third day of the con, he remembered the conversation that we had. 
So he saved one up for me. That way I can grab one. Again, Mr. Stranko, if you're still watching this weird video, again, thank you. Thank you. And on that note, the thanks actually belongs to you guys. Thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you very much for hearing me talk. And again, I do apologize for lagging on these videos, but because I left some, you know, crumbs for the future videos, it's happening. Once more, be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. <laughs> and here's the comment of the day. Which celebrities have you met? Were they musicians? Were they creators? Were they actors? Were anybody? Comment below on that one. All right, guys, I think I hear my dog, so uh, we're gonna go tend to that. Take care. Ugh.